Avançamos para, um, para uma primeira intervenção das que vão encerrar este Congresso. Já falamos de grandes jogadores, de grandes treinadores. Se perguntarmos na plateia quem é o árbitro mais icónico, mais emblemático dos últimos anos do futebol, todos vamos ter na memória a mesma imagem. É o homem que dirigiu uma histórica final dos Jogos Olímpicos com a Nigéria e a Argentina em 96. Dirigiu também a final do Mundial 2002, dos golos de Ronaldo naquele Brasil-Alemanha. E dirigiu uma das finais, se calhar, mais históricas, para muitos a mais de sempre, da Liga dos Campeões, a final de 99, extraordinária, entre o Man United e o Bayern de Munique, que teve aquela reviravolta final, e eu diria que, para ser absolutamente inesquecível, tinha que ter, de facto, o árbitro mais emblemático de todos. É um motivo para acreditarmos que o futebol é hoje mais limpo e transparente o facto de liderar o Comitê de Árbitros da FIFA, o Sr. Pierre Luigi Colina. <tos> Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Referees normally plan everything. I've been told to step up on the stage exactly two seconds ago. So it was a bit of a surprise for me. I thought it was a coffee break, but the coffee break went through. So, uh, as you can imagine, I will speak about referees. This is my life, uh, this has been my life uh, for, uh, for many years uh, and I'm very uh, happy, pleased and lucky to, to work in this, uh, in this field and to continue to work in this field. Um, I want to speak about uh, football and refereeing and uh, I think it is important to understand that uh, you can play football You cannot play football without uh, a ball. You cannot play football without a pitch with goals. You cannot play football without players. These are the key elements of a match. But you can't play football without a referee. At the beginning, football was played without referees. Football was played by two teams and the captain. The captains of the two teams were those who made a decision on the field of play by agreeing something. And only when uh, it was impossible to, to find an agreement, uh, they literally go to a gentleman seated outside of the field of play to refer to him for the final decision. You might not know that the word the referee comes from the man who's the who the decision is referred to. So it's the one, was the one who had to make uh, the decision many, many years ago. So you can play football without uh, referees, uh, but referees uh, in modern football are a service uh, given to football to allow the match to be played uh, according to the laws of the game and fairly. So their presence on the field of play is uh, definitely very important. And, uh, This service provided to football, of course, as well as every service is provided in every business, has to be adequate at the standard that football requires today. If you look at this picture, this is the referee of the first World Cup final played in Uruguay in 1930. At that time, football required a gentleman wearing a jacket and tie walking on the field of play. That was, uh, at that time, what football needed from uh, referees. Today, completely different. Today, the objectives uh, of uh, refereeing uh, are uh, to bring the standard, the quality of uh, the referee's performance as high, uh, as high as possible, and, uh, as a consequence, uh, to lower as much as possible, the number of uh, the mistakes uh, committed on uh, the field of play. Two important uh, objectives. Uh, how to achieve uh, these objectives? Basically, you can work on the referee's preparation. You can improve 
the referee's preparation. But um, unfortunately, today, even a very well prepared referee cannot compete uh, with uh, the technology that lives with us. We live in a world where technology surrounds us. Everything is based on technology today. So it's difficult to think that on a football pitch, football can avoid to involve technology. So certainly, the use of technology can be, can be important. In 2012, five years ago, Euro, uh, there were some uh, criticism against uh, a referee who was not able to see that the ball crossed the line in a match uh, Ukraine-England when John Terry saved just after the goal line and the goal was not awarded. Uh, the technology proved that the ball was over the line for 2.2 centimeters. 2.2 centimeters. It's something like this. This is not for human being. This is for technology. So football accepted to work with technology. And in many competitions, the goal line technology has been implemented. It's already well known, so I don't want to enter deep into this, this matter. Uh, certainly, it's something that uh, gives the referee the guarantee that when the ball crosses the line, the goal is awarded. Another technology is currently experimented, is the VAR, the Video Assistant Referees. Um, yesterday, the technical director of IFAB already spoke of the VAR, so I don't want to, to bother you again on this, uh, on this issue, repeating what he said. I prefer to focus on the human touch. So I go back uh, to the work we need to do to improve the referee standard because uh, even using technology, we still need uh, top prepare referee to lower the number of mistakes committed on the field of play. And the areas where we need to work uh, to improve the quality, the standard of the referees basically are three. It's fitness, so the physical preparation, the knowledge of the laws of the game and the interpretation of the laws of the game, and the knowledge of football. I start from fitness because today football is played so fast, the tempo of the match is so high that we can say that it's very demanding. It's very demanding for everybody, for the players and also for the referees. And the main concern for people involved in a match that is highly demanding is tiredness. When you are tired, it is very probable that you lose lucidity. And if you are not lucid, it's very probable that you commit a mistake. As a player, you get late in a challenge and you probably make a foul. As a referee, when something has to be assessed, you probably take the wrong decision. Not because you are poor, not because you are unlucky, simply because you are tired. So training means for modern referees not to run faster, but to be lucid when they have to make the decision, particularly at the very end of a match. So to to have referees well prepared, we start from the field of play. This is the, the graphic of, the, uh, of how the heart of this referee worked during the Champions League final played here in Lisbon in 2014. So this is the Dutch referee, Kuipers. This is the match you see Real Madrid, Atletico Madrid. And you can easily see here and here, and here, and here, the first, the second half, the first extra time, and the second extra time. And you see how the heart worked. Always in the orange-red area. The orange-red area, for those from there who cannot read, it's between 150 and 190 beats per minute. This is what the heart of this referee did during the match. 
So it is important to start from this because this is what the referee needs. And if this is the ref what the referee needs, uh, when he trains, uh, he has to train uh, at the same level. So this is a training session run in uh, early 9 2016. And you can see here that the most important parts of the training session are run again in the orange and the red zone. So we start from the pitch to create a tailor-made fitness program for each referee to get them fit at the highest possible level. Uh, for a referee, but I would say for every decision maker, it is important to be good, but it's also very important to look good. Uh, if you commit a mistake, uh, if you look good, uh, you are accepted. If you take a good decision, but you don't look good, uh, it's difficult that your decision is accepted. So the FIFA president remembers very well when we had uh, some talks at the beginning of the 2010, uh, the, the image, the shape of, uh, at that time, with referees was not uh, uh, very, I would say there were some exceptions, was not uh, really positive. We worked on this, we worked very hard on this, and I'm very proud to show you some figures, because I think uh, facts uh, speak better than, than words. So if you look at this graph, you can see here, sorry, you can see here from 2012 till 2016, a few months ago, and you can see this is the number of referees who have a percentage of fat, of fat mass that can be compared with professional athletes in football. You can see that here only 13 out of, 30, of 45 had this kind of percentage, only the 28.9%. percent few years later, here, out of 74 referees, this is the number, 62 had this kind of body fat percentage, 83.8. Uh, believe me, they didn't go under any liposuction. They simply worked. They simply worked very hard, and they achieved a very important result. Uh, laws of the game is obvious. If a referee has to guarantee that the laws of the game are applied on the field of play, he has to know it. Uh, FIFA, as well as as well as all the confederation, pay great attention. So they organize, uh, they arrange courses uh, during the season, during the year, inviting referees, also the national association do the same. Unfortunately, these courses uh, cannot be run uh, very often during the year. As an example, uh, the confederation I work with, uh, UEFA, arranges uh, two courses per year. One normally in early August and the second one in February. Uh, Savas so Andir, that uh, if we have a problem in September, we should need until February to brief uh, the referees. Because we cannot implement the number, increase the number of the courses because of time availability, but also for cost implication. So what we did is uh, to get in touch with uh, our referees during the season whenever something happened on the field of play, whenever we need to get in touch with them during the season, we created a platform and if they cannot come to the headquarters of the Confederation, we go through internet, through the website, to their houses, so we can provide immediately after an incident occurred the clip here is from a match played in Champions League last week, it was Monaco Man City. So whenever we want to get in touch with the referee, we can send them a clip, and more important than the clip, we can send them something to explain if the decision was correct or wrong. But even more important, why the decision was correct and why the decision was wrong, and what should have been done by the referee to make that decision correct. And this is during the season. 
The third pillar is uh, knowing football. Because uh, for many years, uh, a referee fit and the referee who knew the laws of the game was considered well prepared. I always had a different opinion. I think that uh, you must uh, provide uh, the best service for a specific match. And every match is different from another one. So what is important is to, to, to provide the service that is for that particular match. And to do it, you need to know everything about the match you are going to referee. Uh, basically, if you know everything about the match you are going to referee, you can be one step forward and you know before what is going to happen later. You will not be surprised by anything. And when you are surprised, very often you are also wrong. So, what, uh, what the referee needs to know about uh, a match? These are examples. Uh, you certainly are familiar with football, and you can easily understand how could be different a match played by a team playing a positional play or a direct play. Completely different in terms of uh, tactics played during a set piece, uh, during a corner kick or during a free kick, uh, there could be a huge difference uh, for the referee if the defending team defends man-to-man, uh, -man, man marking, or they, they defend zonal. Uh, if they defend zonal, it's uh, a sort of heaven for the referee because there will be no fouls or very few fouls compared to what can happen when a team defends uh, by marking man to man. So knowing this information before, knowing if a player can throw a ball from the sideline by hands uh, into the middle of the penalty area, this can make a huge difference for referees in terms of where focusing the attention. Knowing it before means uh, to be one step forward and means to be ready when something could happen on the field of play. This is uh, football knowledge. It's so important, it's so important that uh, as well as uh, every team, also uh, referees started, started working with uh, match analysts. Before the Euro 2016, uh, uh, we hired, we as UEFA hired the services of uh, um, licensed coaches, licensed football coaches uh, with an experience of, uh, of football. We uh, explained them how to uh, identify what was needed, not for, from a player's point of view, not from the coach point of view, but from the referee's point of view. Uh, every national team qualified for the Euro 2016 was analyzed by these coaches and they created a, a report. They created a report of each team and before every match, the referee, the two assistant referee, the two additional assistant referee and the fourth official, so all the team was briefed as well as it happened before a match for players with coach briefing the players and everything was going to happen into the match was explained the referee. So they knew before what they should have expected. Of course, this was made before the start of the competition and also during the Euro, based on what was going on during the competition itself. Um, I said I am convinced that one of the reasons why the Euro 2016 was so successful in terms of in terms of uh, refereeing uh, was also the, 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 the support, the help uh, given by this uh, staff uh, to the referees. And because of this, uh, we decided to uh, continue to use it in the knockout phase of the Champions League and the Europa League, currently played, and also uh, the under-21 and uh, the women Euro. And then, of course, uh, if... Uh, the president uh, will uh, allow me to do it. Uh, uh, it has a cost, uh, so I'm sure that uh, we will speak of it, uh, but certainly we will implement it also in, uh, in other FIFA competitions. Let me speak uh, very quickly of uh, someone who does a very important job in a football match uh, and uh, uh, 
the importance of these people it's, uh, it's, it's very it's huge in terms of outcome. The best referee of uh, the world can have a great performance jeopardized by a wrong call made by one assistant referee on an offside decision. One single wrong offside decision can heavily affect the standard of the performance of the team of referees. So it is important to consider these uh, assistant referees. Uh, it is important to work with them uh, with specialists. I have the experience, I have knowledge, I have the expertise to teach referees. I've been on the sideline once in my life. What can I teach an assistant referee in terms of his job? So we need to involve people from, uh, with this expertise, former, um, former assistant referees. Also, this assistant referee should attend dedicated courses, so they have to be properly instructed and also trained, because what uh, an assistant referee needs on the field of play is different from what a referee needs on the field of play. And also, uh, the training of offside. Uh, I don't know if you ever thought uh, how an assistant referee can, uh, can train offside situation. During the week, he can prepare running, he can prepare physically, but how can he prepare the offside assessment uh, when he never has player doing, uh, doing this? So at the end of the day, the only chance he has to practice is during matches. So you use his matches to train. That is quite uh, uh, difficult to understand. That's why we also created a web platform with uh, images shooted on the field of play to coach them. It's something that in uh, Formula 1, the Formula 1 drivers did many years ago to replicate what was needed during uh, a, a, a a race during a competition, and we use it also for assistant referees. The time is gone. I want to only give you, again, figures, facts, because uh, I'm convinced that they speak uh, more than, uh, than myself. This is the accuracy of uh, assistant referees' decision on offside in three competitions. The Champions League group phase, 14-15, 15-16, and 16-17 completed. And in the knockout phase, of course, for the current season, is only the round of 16 considered. You can see that the average of the correct, the percentage of the correct decision taken is around 95%. This is the accuracy of their decision. And uh, very often, the assistant referee's decision on offside are very tight decisions, where few centimeters make uh, the difference. Very difficult for them. It's difficult to, to rank, uh, to say, uh, is this accuracy high or not? We should compare to something to say if it's high or not. So the only, the only figure I found uh, to compare with are the percentage of the passes completed by players. So the best, you might not know, the, the, the top performer, the best passer in, uh, in the five uh, uh, leagues uh, considered by these statistics in Europe this season, domestic competition, the top uh, passer is uh, Tony Kroos, Real Madrid, the German who plays in Real Madrid, with a 92.8% of completed. The second one is Thiago Alcantara, 90.3. Then there is Xabi Alonso, 89.4. Verratti, 88. And Paul Pogba, 85. Well below this one. I know players are different from assistant referees, but when we speak about 5% wrong decision, I think it's a huge result achieved. So, thank you very much for, your, for coming. Thank you very much for your assistance. I hope you will look at referees better now. Thank you.